So, uh, good morning. So, my name is Alain Benferrat. And Lens is uh, in north of France. It's just one hour by train from Paris. Uh, I will present a joint work with uh, Kina Zatayebo, who is preparing his PhD student, uh, thesis, sorry, and uh, Philippe Ré, who is from the University of Nantes. And what I will present today is uh, how to use data mining tools to detect complex and coordinated attacks. Of course, there is a real need of using data mining, and I will try to, to explain it later because existing approaches suffer from several uh, problems. So th there will be three parts in the talks. The first one is just presenting the problem, showing that the main approach when now as preconditions and postconditions approaches is not satisfactory. Then I will focus on one approach of uh, classifications that use naive Bayes. I will show how to model this problem with naive Bayes, present different steps, and I will use a very academic example just to illustrate the approach. It's not real experimental data, just. And uh, the third part is to present the experimental data. We have some problems with data that I would like uh, to present. We have make uh, some comparison and also see if there are some complementarities, complementarities between CART. And I will conclude. So we are in the context of intrusion detection systems. They are very important tools to detect some abnormal or malicious activities. So I really here in networks, in traffic networks. So intrusion detection systems allow to detect if uh, some connections is abnormal or not. So until now, there are two main approaches to intrusion detection systems. The first one is anomaly, called anomaly approaches. It's very intuitive, very simple. It simply tries to, to model some normal activity. It tries to define what is the normal activity. For instance, if it's a connection, what is the normal connections? And so we define some variables, for, action, for, for instance, a normal telnet connections is a connection such that the time is between uh, two minutes and five minutes, and the flag is equal to, for instance, RO, etc. So this is, we define the normal. Of course, this normal, this normal profile can be either given by an expert or learned automatically. Then when you have some normal connections, some normal profile, each time you have a connection, we take its profile and we compare it with the normal profile. If there is serious deviation, we consider that this connection is an attack. So we are not able to identify the attack. The only thing that we are able to say is there is some deviation from some normal activity. For instance, if a user is working between 8 morning and uh, 5 p.m., for instance, so if it, it, it comes at 3, 3, uh, 3, 3, 3 o'clock in the morning, so there is something strange. So the only thing what you know is it's not normal. There is a deviation from normal activity. However, you are not able to identify which kind of attack. The only thing what you can say is it's not normal. So this approach is interesting because as soon as you have new attacks, even we never seen before, you are able to detect it. This is the main advantage. It's able to detect new attacks. However, the, the, limit, the limitation is that the deviation can be normal, can be simply normal, because the user had changed his habitude. So the deviation can be normal. And in this case, there are many alerts that has that are produced while it corresponds to normal activity. 
So this is the first approach. We model normal activity. The second approach is complementary. It is based on known attacks. Study, namely, each time that you have a new attack, we try to define its signature. We try to characterize its signature. So we have a databases of signatures, existing signatures of attacks. Then, in the presence of new connections, we will try to, to see if the signature associated to connection is already in the database of attack signature. If it's the case, then we produce an attack. If it's an alert, sorry. If it's the case, we produce alert. Other ways, we consider it's normal. So the advantage is that once you write the signature of an attack, you will always detect connections, connections that contain this attack. This is an advantage. So once you write, when you update your database, you are sure that already known attacks are detected. However, there are limitations. The first obvious one is that each time you have, you, this, this approach is not, is not able to detect new attacks because you don't have its signature in the database. And the, the main limitation also is that, in general, intruders write slight variant of existing attacks. You use a slight variant of existing attacks. Even if you write slight variant of existing attacks, you would not be able to detect it. So this is, this is a, real, uh, this is a real, real problem. And it's not easy, when you, when you now attack, it's not easy to write its signatures. It takes some time, because if, if, you, if you write very large specifications, very large specifications, everything will be considered as attack. If you write very specific specification, you give too many conditions in the signature, then you can only detect this specific attack, and not its variant. So this is, this is, there is a problem on the way you need to write approach. In any case, in both approaches, they produce a lot of alerts, because the first one, there is uh, deviations. Each time there is a deviation, there is alert. Why the second one, new uh, even if there is a small variation, there is an, uh, an alert that is produced. So, so this is the problem. So when you analyze, you can, and we'll, I will illustrate it later in experimental data, there is a large number of alerts that may be produced. Really a large number of alerts. And clearly, an administrator network, security operator, cannot analyze the whole set of alerts. It's impossible to, to analyze the whole set of alerts. So this is what is called the problem of alert correlation. And alert cor correlation has two objectives that I will explain. The first objective, alert correlation, is to reduce the large volume of alerts that are generated by entry and detection systems. So there are different ways to reduce. Sometimes, when you have a network, we use not only one entry and detection system, but several entry and detection systems. Why use several entry and detection systems? To, just to be sure that we will not miss some attacks. So we plug in several intelligent detections in the network, network to be sure to, to not miss some, uh, some attacks. However, this has limitations. If there is an attack which is seen by all intelligent detection systems, all of them, each of them, will produce an alert. So and our security operator will analyze several times the same event. So one of the tasks of alert correlation tools is to see when there are several reported alerts, whether they correspond to the same event. I mean, whether they correspond to the same event, whether they are similar or not. If they are similar, we just gather, uh, gather them together, and only one Meta alert is produced to security operators. We just say that, okay, this, in fact, these uh, alerts correspond from different EDS, but in fact, 
the corresponds to the same event, hence only one alert is produced.